Creating a brand from the ground up can feel like such an overwhelming task. There's so many important stages that you need to execute in order to design a brand that is distinct, creative, and in line with the brand's values. This normally results in imposter syndrome, and we end up questioning if we even have the skills and knowledge to create a complete brand identity. The answer to that is of course you do, but the thing you lack that is making you feel so overwhelmed and causing you to doubt yourself is the fact that you don't have a clear design process that will guide you from start to finish and allow you to build brands with ease. But fear no more, my fellow designers. In this video, we will go through my exact process and create a brand identity from start to finish so you can get a clear understanding of the exact process that crafting a brand requires. So let's first meet the business that we will be creating the brand for. Say hello to Mighty Swirl. They provide an array of healthy yogurt to UK supermarkets. Their goal is to create a high protein, low fat yogurt that helps those who have an active and healthy lifestyle. They want to create a wave of fresh air in the high protein product industry and be an alternative to over busy and intimidating protein products that are on the market. So now we know about the business, here's an overview of each stage that we will go through when creating the brand. This stage is all about understanding the business's goals, their mission, values, researching into their target audience and competitors, and giving design solutions. Having a clear understanding of all of these components means we can design with intent. We know exactly who we are trying to target with visual design and how we can help the business stand out against competitors. So here's a brief overview of the brand strategy information for this project. Here you can see the brand's goals, competitors, target audience, and more. Feel free to pause this video if you want to take a closer look. So from this, two mood boards with slightly different styles have been put together with all of this in mind. For the client to clearly understand each direction, annotations and descriptions have been used to outline both mood boards. Don't forget to explain your decisions so there's no confusion. That is something that I've learned that is key to the design process. We can't expect the client to just understand the visuals. I then upload the brand strategy presentation into my Notion client portal, which contains the two mood boards ready for feedback from my client. So they decided on mood board two as they liked the inviting and friendly nature of the color palette and were also open to using either distorted or rustic edges on the typography, something that they hadn't previously considered as this gives off an organic and natural feel to the brand, which fits in with the business's target audience. Now we know the style and direction of the brand, it's time to start exploring and designing the logo suite. When designing an entire logo suite, we need to understand what is gonna work for the business. Is it a logo type or is it an icon or symbol as the main focus? Essentially, what is gonna help them stand out against their competitors? For this brand, we're gonna focus on a custom logo type and a brand mark. Reason being is this business is a product-based one, meaning for things like product packaging, they will need their branding to be flexible to meet different requirements. So with that said, we are first gonna start designing the logo type. Let's refer back to the mood board and look at the typography inspiration so we can get a feel for what the client wants. And then we're gonna head over to my favorite platform and the sponsor of this video, Invata Elements, to source some fonts. They are my go-to for sourcing fonts for design projects as they have over 30,000 to choose from. Plus, you can download as many as you want, which is ideal for the the start of the design process where a lot of experimentation happens. If you're interested, click the first link in my description. It not only helps you, but it also helps support this channel. So thank you. So after going through a lot of fonts that match the mood board, these are the three that I wanna go with and explore further. The client understands the importance of using that serif font with the curves to create that friendly and inviting feeling. Okay, so after playing around with these three fonts, I have finally decided on Esther Regular. I love love the imperfect round edges and how it can be easily tweaked and my gut is just telling me to go for it. For the layout of the primary logo type, I'm gonna use a stacked position because the word mighty represents strength and power. So being on top of swirl works really nicely. Now for the fun part, we're gonna start designing the logo type and customizing the letters. So I'm gonna go straight in with the letter M. I'm grabbing my pencil tool and I've got a really good idea to kind of make the M look like a heart. So I'm just dragging the pencil tool over 
And potentially, if we move the middle leg, it would probably look more like a heart, which it definitely does, that's good. So I'm just gonna get this to the desired kind of shape that I want and create that top of the love heart. I'm just going over the original M and kind of making it look like drips and swirls to really get the emphasis of yoga. I think if we potentially move the two legs in as well, it will create more of that custom heart shape and bring it all in closer to the center. So I'm just gonna continue getting this to how I want it. And I'm gonna do um, each shape as well and customize each letter. And I will come back and show you the end result. So as you can see, we have gone from the original font to now a customized logo type that is distinct to the business. So some of my design decisions include the G that includes a swirl and draws your eyes down to the word swirl. H, the left leg has been designed to kind of look like a leg that is high and mighty and resting on the letters R and L. It's kind of like a person who has reached a destination and is putting a pole down as well as their leg. Then all the letters within swirl have been customized to fit a word around mighty, creating that swirl feeling and also showing the word mighty's power. So at the moment, something just currently feels like it is missing that is tying the logo type together. So what I wanna try is adding like a border or a splat to represent a yogurt splat and just add some personality into it. I kinda want it to feel quite natural and imperfect, just like in the mood board with the rustic edges. So I'm gonna test out two ways to create a border. Border. So the first way is I'm gonna go to object, path, and then offset path, and I'm gonna set this to 25, maybe 22 if that works, press okay, and then I'm just gonna unite this, change the words to white, and see that kind of just looks too perfect. So what I'm gonna try now is I'm actually just gonna grab the pencil tool again, and I'm just gonna draw around the um, logo type and this will kind of create my own rustic, kind of imperfect shape, which I think may potentially work better than actually using that outer path option. So that was quite smooth of me with doing the pencil tool. So I'm just gonna change that to white. And you know what? That looks a lot better than the other one. It just looks too perfect. And I kind of like how it's like misplaced. I'm just gonna amend that top bit. And yeah, I, I actually prefer that. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this one and we're gonna go with the second one and use that. It's kind of just tied it all in really, really nicely, which is the look that I was going for. We now have the primary logo type. We will now move on to creating a logo mark for this brand. Using a logo mark can be so beneficial to any business as it is instantly recognizable. Just like the Nike tick or the Pepsi icon, as soon as you see the mark, you instantly know the brand, which is crucial for a product-based business like Mighty Swell, who will be sat next to their competitors on supermarket shelves. So in the primary logo type, we played off of the M symbol Symbolizing a heart and reminding people to look after the health. Now this is a really strong idea, it's something that I want to explore. So therefore I'm gonna try and create a swirl that incorporates the M and the heart element within the brand mark. So I've been trying this out and I've tested a few um, and I think I finally figured out what I wanna do. So I'm gonna duplicate this, I'm grabbing the pencil tool and customizing the M shape that we've got already. So I kinda want the heart to include a swirl that goes around um, and represents the word swirl and then the heart to represent the M from Mighty. I'm just using the pencil tool um, to get my desired look. I think if I grab the smooth tool, I'm just gonna smooth this out, but this is kind of what I envisioned and it kind of looks like someone going like this as well as mighty. So it's like a mighty heart. Um, and the smooth tool is my favorite tool, by the way, if you haven't used it, it basically just smooths out the edges, which I'm gonna carry on doing to get this to exactly how I want it. So the primary logo type and the logo mark have been designed. Next, I will go on to creating a variety of logo variations that are responsive and can be used in different spaces. Like I mentioned before, this is crucial for product-based businesses who will need packaging. So I've gone ahead and created three additional logos, a landscape variation stacked with no border and a submark logo. We now have a responsive logo suite which allows the client to use their logos in different scenarios. Something that you've probably picked up on is that everything I've designed so far is in black and white. The reason for this is so I can ensure legibility to the logo variations and sometimes when adding color, this can act as a distraction. But with that being said, we are now ready to 
bring this brand to life, add in some personality and add in that color. So for this, if we refer back to the mood board, we can see the colors the client likes and start exploring some different color palettes. So Mighty Swell envision the branding to be pastel, light, fluffy and uplifting. They want to steer away from that masculine, heavy and obvious protein brand visuals and therefore go for something more light and inviting that doesn't scare people away. So I always test out a load of different tones and similar colors until one just feels right. I might end up with a crazy amount of palettes, but it is just part of the process. So I am just grabbing loads of different colors and creating my own color palettes until I kind of figure out one that I know will work for this brand. So once I've had a play around with the colors, I then cover the artboards with the chosen color palette and make sure that all of the logos work in the different colors. I'm using the eyedropper tool just to eyedrop the color that I want the logo to be. Um, and I'm changing some of the tones slightly of the purple just to get the exact color that I want and to fit with the other color palettes as well. So we now have a beautiful color palette that emulates that uplifting and light feeling that the client wants in order to attract their target audience. I think this color palette works really, really nicely against the current competitors due to being light, pastel and uplifting. So now we've designed a cohesive logo suite, we can now start designing some unique elements that involve shapes or patterns that are gonna be recognizable to this brand. Adding in elements like this injects personality into the brand, making a strong impression on its customers. This helps with things like brand awareness and recognition. Not to mention these extras come in super helpful when designing product packaging or building a website. So the logo mark that was previously created has inspired me for this brand pattern. So I'm going to create some swirls and shapes that fit into one another to emulate yogurt splats and drips. So I'm grabbing the pencil tool and I'm just creating custom shapes. I have no idea how this pattern is going to look, but I know that these shapes will be useful in product packaging and other bits as well. So I am just using the pencil tool. You will notice that the pencil tool is my favorite tool to use when creating brand identities. Um, a little tip as well, just make sure that the elements that you create are consistent with the rest of the brand. Otherwise, it might create distrust with the audience as the brand won't be as cohesive and recognizable. So I'm going to continue just creating some more swirls and kind of form them into one another. And then we will turn it into a brand pattern. So I've now drawn all of the shapes with the pencil tool that form into one another. I'm now going to just turn this into a pattern by selecting all of the shapes. I'm going to head to object pattern make, figure out uh, which tile type I want. I think brick by column, no. Do hex by column could work really nicely. You'll notice that we've got white space there now. So what I'm gonna do is just use the pencil tool to kind of draw some shapes that fit in there and can take up all of that white space. So then we'll have a really nice consistent pattern. Okay, so that is completed. I'm gonna click done at the top, which will now turn it into a swatch. I'm just gonna move the shapes to the left. I'm gonna create a box um, and then I'm gonna click onto the swatches panel on my pattern, which will now bring up the pattern that we have created. I'm just gonna create this a little bit larger by using the eyedropper tool. And now we have a beautiful swatch that is cohesive with the rest of the branding. Now the branding has been designed, we need to see it in action. This is important because designs might look good on the computer screen, but how do we transfer it over onto real things like marketing materials or products? Note that this is even more important for product-based businesses. A great way to do this is by using mock-up templates. And with this brand, a 3D yogurt pot would work really well. I've sourced some from Envato Elements and we're gonna see exactly what this brand identity looks like on a real life product. From this, I've designed packaging labels for yogurt pots and included the logos and illustrations so the client has an example of the brand in action and potentially what their products could look like. I'll still include mock-ups like these even if the client hasn't opted for packaging because it helps the client vision exactly what their branding is going to look like and it can even help upsell the idea that they need this packaging design once they see it.
So throughout this whole design process, the client is yet to see any designs. This is because we have been exploring concepts, ideas, and building the brand. But now we have built a strong, clear, and concise brand identity, it's now time to present it to the client in the best possible way. Just an FYI, I adopt the one concept method as I believe this works best. If you'd like to know more about this, let me know in the comments and I will do a dedicated video on it. So to present the brand in an attractive way, we need to create a presentation. If you're unsure on how to lay out this presentation or what to include, I have a template within my shop that shows you exactly how to, but it should end up looking something like this. You can see we have a breakdown of the logo suite, photography direction, mock-ups, and so much more. This then gets uploaded to my Notion client portal, ready for feedback from the client. A little tip with this is I give my clients three days to provide feedback. This is stated within the contract, and I do this to ensure that the project sticks to the time frame and doesn't drag on. It's good to set boundaries. The client then gives feedback on the brand identity and on this occasion, they loved the brand I had created and didn't want to make any changes as they felt it really aligned with their vision and business goals, which is why brand strategy is so important. Now I will go ahead and package up all of the files for the client along with making a brand guidelines document so they are confident when using their new branding. And that is it, the whole design process done from start to finish. Something I'm gonna add on is a video brand reveal almost like an advert that you'd see on the television. This isn't included within my design process and it's purely added for these videos. So sit back and let me introduce you to Mighty Swell. Now, it's all well and good having a streamlined process, which I hope this video has helped you with, but what good is that if you're struggling to get clients? Well, if that's you, you need to watch this video right here where I explain how you can start getting clients by using social media. I will see you lovely people at the next video.